Bible on the Beach. Today we'll be in Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 through 11. Paul says, He existed in the form of God, yet he gave no thought to seizing equality with God as his supreme prize. So here we see the example of Jesus in the laying down of one's rights. This could probably be the most powerful, pertinent message for this moment today in 2022. The laying down of one's rights. Let me say it this way. The laying down of one's leverage. Uh, we're taught to defend, uh, well, to establish and to defend our rights and to keep our leverage at all times. Um, that's the key, supposedly, uh, to staying ahead, and being successful. Here we find uh, the opposite. Uh, we find um, Jesus setting the spiritual example of us actually giving away our, uh, our leverage uh, and putting ourselves in the position of serving others. <clears throat> he says, instead, he emptied himself of his outward glory by reducing himself to the form of a lowly servant. Uh, it is very rare that people um, serve uh, at a level that is beneath them. And yet this is precisely what we see in the life of Jesus. Think about it. You're God, you're in heaven, and you decide to take a lowly position, a lesser position, less leverage, less rights, uh, in order to set an example and to serve. And yet this is the heart of God. This is the Christian uh, ethic. And so we see this modeled and displayed in the life of Jesus because he wants to see it modeled and displayed in our life. So Jesus always calls us to servanthood and a lessening of position, a lessening of power, a lessening of prestige. It always cracks me up to see people who have power and have prestige and have a platform quote easy Bible verses to support their power, their prestige, and their platform. You do not find this in the person or the position of Jesus. You find actually the opposite. You find the man who came to wash feet. You find uh, the God man who came out of heaven, he lowered himself. And so you find that actual spiritual power, actual spiritual prestige, actual spiritual platform comes from humility and it comes from serving others. It says he became a human, he humbled himself, became vulnerable choosing to be revealed as a man and was obedient. So really following Jesus has to do with being a servant and it has to do with being humble and it has to do with being obedient. Not all this other garbage that we're taught because we can see it in the life and the example of Jesus. He says he was a perfect example the only example you need is the one that's already gone before us. It's the example of Jesus Christ, the person, the teachings, the resurrected Son of God. That is our primary example if we love and live for Jesus as we follow him. Uh, even in his death, a criminal's death by crucifixion. And so, uh, Real spirituality leads to uh, a deeper humility, a deeper servanthood, and a deeper suffering. And virtually no one teaches that these days. It's all about us and what we get out of it and all this other stuff. Well, real discipleship, the real following of Jesus, will lead to servanthood and suffering, just as it did for Jesus, the one who's trying to teach us this stuff. So we have to accept that, uh, and we have to be at peace with that. Because of that obedience, God exalted him and multiplied his greatness. He has now been given the greatest of all names. Jesus Christ, 
is the name above all names. The Bible says that every knee and every uh, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father because there is literally, it's the name above all names, Jesus Christ. There's one hero of heaven, Jesus Christ. He says the authority of the name of Jesus causes every knee to bow in reverence. There's a lot of names in the world, eight billion. One name has the power. One name has all the leverage. It's Jesus Christ. Everything and every one will one day submit to his name. Sometimes justice is accomplished on earth. Sometimes it isn't. There's one judge of the world. It's Jesus Christ. Every living creature, human being, will one day submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. In the heavenly realm, in the earthly realm, in the demonic realm. That means on heaven, on earth, and in hell. One name, one name, Jesus Christ. One ruler, Jesus Christ. All the leverage, all the power, all the glory, all the honor, Jesus Christ. And every tongue will proclaim in every language Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess in every language and every created being, whether angel or human or animal, will bow down at the name of Jesus Christ, the most powerful name, the name above all names, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is Lord, bringing glory and honor to his Father. One of the practices that I, that I enjoy doing in my life is just saying the name of Jesus, whispering the name of Jesus, thinking about the name of Jesus in every space, in every place, in every country, in every state, in every city, everywhere I go, just say the name of Jesus, whisper the name of Jesus, think about the name of Jesus. It'll always bring you peace, always lower your anxiety, always give you strength. Why? Because it's the name above all names. And yes, some people use it as a cuss word, and they will very much regret that on Judgment Day. Not because we judge, but can you imagine standing in front of Jesus and trying to explain to him why you drug his name through the dirt and use it as a swear word? Bad move. Uh, I would refrain from that. I would repent from that. I would ask God to forgive you if you've done that. So Jesus Christ, the name above every other name is what the Bible teaches. I'm thankful for that today. I'm encouraged by that today. There's a strength, a power, and a grace that comes from understanding it. And thanks so much for watching Bible at the Beach today. Until next time, I hope you have a beautiful day.